Good morning and welcome to the Anthony Petiti Organic Gardening Show. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. Here we are, the 4th of July, a weekend for us to celebrate our independence. And we have so much to be thankful for. So we're going to talk some about our wonderful country today and um, and then gardening and so many things um, going on and we have so much to talk about and be thankful for. So we're going to go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Father, we just come before you and we just thank you for your goodness and your grace, Father. We just thank you for the blessings that you have given us and we just ask that we can see how to continue to do your work. Father, show us how we can can do what you want us to do. Give us divine appointments, Father, to share your message and to just show your love, Father. Father, we beg you. We beg you, Father. Please just help us. Show us the love of Christ and let us show that to the people that are hurting so badly right now, Father. We just thank you. We just thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, here it is. It's the 4th of July, and we do have so much to be thankful for. This great country is, yes, we have our flaws. We have we have imperfections, but we have a wonderful country that is God-fearing. And if we forget that, we are doomed. <laughs> And we need to remember how our forefathers came up with our Constitution by being God-fearing men. And they were not perfect. In no way were they perfect. And they made mistakes just like all of us make mistakes. But we need to be thankful for our independence and to be our own country. And we need to remember today, you know, July 4th, 2020, that we are in the land of the free. And we need to be thankful for that, not only to our forefathers and our military that has helped us stay this free country to be independent, but also to our Heavenly Father who knew we were going to be here. We just need to thank him every day that we are here and for what he has given us. And in celebration of the 4th of July, um, we will be closing early today so that our employees can have some time with their families. So today um, we opened at 8, but we will only be open until 1 o'clock. And um, then we are, remember, uh, we are closed on Sundays now. So our regular hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. till 6 p.m., Saturdays, 8 to 4, closed Sunday. Today, we will be closing at 1 o'clock. Um, there is um, some other exciting things going on. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of activities today, and some of the farmer's markets are going on, so you'll need to check with those um, before you go out because some of them um, are not having it because of today being a holiday. Um, but the Hartzler Family Dairy is doing Christmas in July this year. This is the first time ever they have done a little thing like this, and their eggnog is available for the month of July. Actually, we had it. We had it starting on Monday, so you can get um, Hartzler Family Dairy eggnog. So if you are their eggnog fan, um, and many of you are, um, we will have their eggnog throughout the whole month, just like we carry all of their other line, um, their um, whole milk, their chocolate milk, their new flavored individual size milks, their cheeses, their butters, their ice cream. Um, we also, for the month of July, um, will carry the eggnog. So if you need some of that, come on over. Um, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And also, in celebration of Christmas in July, you know, what do we get at Christmas time? We get gifts at Christmas time. So we are giving out gifts as well, and we're going to have some sales. So as a gift, anyone that comes in to the greenhouse today um, is going to get free tomato plants. 
and you can have really as many as you want. Um, this is going to be a one day gift sale. <laughs> so it's really not a sale. It's just you come in today. Um, you can say, hey, I heard Cindy this morning on the radio and we want some of those free tomatoes. Um, we do have a lot and it's getting really hot. You know how the heat was this week. It's supposed to be even hotter next week. Um, it's really stressful for anything to be in the greenhouse. But the tomatoes, um, you know, they they dry out really, really quickly in those little cell packs. And so we're watering them all the time. The nutrients are leaching out. And so we are, um, you know, going to have to get rid of them somehow. And we would rather you have them or your community garden have them, someone have them and get them in the ground and get some use out of them than us having to throw them away. So come in today and have um, as many as you want free tomato plants. We are also doing a Christmas in July sale on all the rest of our vegetables. So they're going to be like we had prior for tomatoes, BOGO. So if you buy a tray, you get a tray. You can mix and match any way you want. Um, So you buy a tray of peppers, you can get a tray of cabbage or cauliflower or Um, kale or Swiss chard or kohlrabi. Um, So we have a lot of those cold crops um, still. We also have some great pumpkins, um, some spaghetti squash, butternut squash, watermelon, eggplant. So any of those, buy one, get one free, mix and match any way you want. Um, And those will be going on um, throughout the entire week, that sale. The tomatoes is just for today um, because actually tomorrow when we're not open, I'm going to be doing some work in the greenhouse tomorrow afternoon and I will be getting those um, tomatoes ready to trash them out um, because I can't really afford to pay anybody to keep watering them. Um, it, we have to water them so many times a day when it's really hot out like this. Um, But a lot of you um, are still planting. So, you know, you can plant at this time of the season. You know, here we are, 4th of July. People are like, the summer's half over. Um, Really, summer is just beginning. Um, Just began a couple weeks ago. Um, Actually, two weeks ago, to be exact, I think. Um, But anyhow, we we still can be planting vegetables. Um, Certain things should be planted, I would suggest, in pots right now or some kind of container that you could bring in in case of cold temperatures before the plant comes to harvest. So if you are doing tomatoes or peppers, um, eggplant um, in a container is going to be great because that way if, you know, some night in October and you don't have all of your fruit yet, You could pull them into the garage or under a porch, um, something like that, and then you would be able to continue to harvest. Now, your cold crops, you can go ahead and still put them in the ground without without any problem. Um, You can, you know, put the cabbage and the kale, um, the cauliflower, all of those things can handle the cold. So you could go ahead and plant them now. And if we have a frost in October, you don't have to worry a thing about it um, because you can still harvest from that and you're not going to have any of those issues. Now, speaking of issues, several of you are having issues. Um, I noticed the Japanese beetles last Saturday afternoon um, when I was watering at the store. Um, The Japanese beetles were coming out on to our Shasta daisies. Um, This week, many of you have been in. It's like the Japanese beetles came and they are out of vengeance. So we do carry the Japanese beetle killer. Um, It is a safe product, but will kill the Japanese beetles. It's going to kill other beetles as well and other insects, but it is triggered for the Japanese beetles. This is a great um, product to spray on any of those things that they seem to like. Your roses, your... um, flowering, um, uh, sorry, cherry trees, anything that is burgundy leafed, they seem to really, really like those. Also your basil, watch out in your vegetable garden. They love your basil. They love your grapevines. Um, they like your beans. So you really need to be really be on guard watching your vegetable garden right now. The Japanese beetles are out with a vengeance. You also can use the traps. Now, My suggestion for the traps, it has an attractant in it. It's going to attract the Japanese beetles to the little bag because that's where the lure is. 
So you do not want this next to a plant that they really like because they're still going to like the plant, the thing that God gave them, much better than the artificial thing that you're trying to get them to like. So it's like, um, you know, with a, I think I've used this analogy before, like ice cream. So you lure them in and you're like, you have the ice cream, but the Your rose is like a banana split and you're saying, which one would you rather have, just a bowl of ice cream or the whole banana split? And of course, they're going to want that banana split more than just the ice cream. So you want this lure, this attractant to catch their attention, but not be close to something that they like even more than that. So put your um, beetle bags far away from anything else. that they really like. So if your rose bushes and your weeping snow fountain cherry is in the front yard in your front um, beds, put your Japanese beetle in the backyard um, or in the side yard uh, or in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> um, that's um, always a funny, we always tell people, you know, put it in the neighbor's yard and see if you can get them all to go over there. The other thing you do need to keep in mind is, um, You can put down milky spore. Now, milky spore right now is not in any way, shape, or form going to help your Japanese beetles because it only kills it in the larva form in that little grub form that you're going to see in the ground. And so now that they're up, the grubs aren't there. Um, so putting down milky spore right now is not going to help the Japanese beetle. But it being in the ground, when the Japanese beetle females lay their egg, and that egg starts to turn to that pupa stage and it's starting to eat your soil and it's growing and gets into that grub stage as it's eating your the stuff in your soil it will eat that spore and die before it can cause any issues so it's not that you don't want to put the milky spore down now um you still can but remember it's not going to help your japanese beetles this year it's going to help them next year because you're going to kill the grub Um, before they can start damaging your yard for one thing and also um, before they can develop get underground and then turn into a Japanese beetle again next year so anytime really is a great time to put down the milky spore and You just want to make sure um, that you keep in mind doing it in the summertime um, when we aren't in an, a rainy time. You're probably going to have best results if you get it watered in. So put down the milky spore on your yard and then turn your sprinkler on and let it run and get it worked down into the soil. Or watch the weather when they're calling for a good rain. You know, do your milky spore right before that and then that's going to get it into the soil and get things moving, um, get that so- spore starting to spread. spread throughout the whole yard and then when the Japanese beetles are laying their eggs um, in mid to late August um, you're going to have good coverage and that way um, you're going that grub will start to eat and then die and you're not going to have to worry anything about it Well, we do have um, a few more questions to answer and some more things to talk about that has come in new this week. Um, but we are going to take a break and hear from our sponsors. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Get some information about Bull Country Compost. Bull Country Compost. 